Still ahead, did you know the internet that you use every day on your computer, on your phone, was started right here in this room by UCLA? Leonard is the guy who hit the switch. We will talk to him after this short break. Stick with us. Did you know the internet once had an on-off switch? That's interesting. The guy who turned it on actually still works at the same place right here in Southern California. KTLA's Dave Malkoff tracked him down. Down a drab UCLA basement hallway. <laughs> You'll find the room where this guy... So, I'm Leonard Kleinrock. I'm a professor at UCLA in the computer science department. Switch on the internet. Let's review. Connect Prodigy to your... Copy, sir. Continue. Hey, America Online is making... The internet actually started before all that, back in the late 60s, when it was just a few people experimenting with some expensive government computers. Come on, and we're walking into a... A holy place, if you will. <laughs> for me and, and for <laughs> well, other for people everyone. who love the internet, yeah. Leonard was one of those guys who was here in this room the night of October 29th, 1969. I like to say that's the day the infant internet took its first breath of life. At the time, only a few colleges had computers. So th and this is a... A hardened machine, military hardened machine. For example, the University of Utah had a graphics machine, UCLA was great at simulation, Stanford had the databases, and the University of Illinois worked on supercomputers. It's old architecture. It is so ugly, in my mind it's beautiful. <laughs> if you wanted to use different computers that did different things, you had to fly to different colleges. This was spanning the country. Dr. Kleinrock's team wanted to connect them all. All the way out to Cambridge, Mass. There was only one tiny problem. Every one of them said, we want nothing to do with this network. It took the Pentagon's research wing, ARPA, to twist their arms. In those days, it had to be forced on them, but it happened very quickly. The first logon was between this room at UCLA and the Stanford Research Institute 350 miles north. Only three people involved in this. Late at night, alone in that room, we typed in the L. Said, you get the L? Says, yep, got the L. Type the O, you get the L? Got the L. Type the G, you get the G. Crash. That would make the first message ever sent over the internet L-O, not... Mr. Watson, come here, I want you. Or... Those guys were smart. Yeah. They understood public media. The internet didn't have some poignant first phrase. All the internet got was L-O. Wait, come to think of it, that's... Low. As in, lo and behold. I heard every word you said distinctly. You were perfectly clear. I, I, I recognized your voice. Very quickly, the connections grew. Hawaii, London, the rest of the world. Here in this room, from the rotary phones to the paint, it looks the same as it did the day when Leonard switched on the internet back in 1969. What I didn't anticipate was that it was about people talking to people. When email was introduced in 1972, I said, oh my gosh, these communities are sort of the lifeblood of this internet. Even back then, the UCLA team had big plans for their crazy network. Take a look at this one idea we found in the archives. So you're talking about a pocket radio that could hook up to the internet and people could send messages back and forth. You bet. It sounds familiar. Yes, it does. Exactly. It's now called, basically, smartphones. <laughs> Eventually, the ARPANET went offline. But what they left behind, what it became, changed the world. At the birthplace of the internet, Dave Malkoff, KTLA 5 News. Hello, look out. Look out. What would we do without it now? Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? Very little. Yeah.